Are you guys looking to source your own product and get started selling online? Or maybe you're just trying to build a brand or maybe just trying to save some money and buy in bulk or just buy a big item. You might've heard of Alibaba as a great tool for this, but you just don't know how to you know, navigate the gigantic platform, you know, find the best manufacturer, or you're just worried about getting scammed in general. So in this video, I'm gonna show you who exactly should be using Alibaba and who shouldn't, along with what products are best for sourcing on Alibaba and which ones are not. On top of that, I'm gonna go over seven lessons and strategies to make your experience as smooth as possible on Alibaba, and pick the best manufacturer, get the best product, and of course, making sure you're protecting yourself at all costs, You know, protecting your money, uh, protecting your time. Just real quick before we get started with that, guys, I just wanna welcome in anybody new to the channel. My name's Cameron James. I've been selling on Amazon for four years now. My first year, I did over $1.3 million uh, with a private label product. Since then, I've started over 30 plus private label products, and yes, 90% of them are from Alibaba. So I feel like I'm a perfect person to share uh, my insights with when it comes to this subject. So if you guys wanna stay up to date with everything about sourcing, manufacturing, selling products online, uh, I'm your guy. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and that little notifications bell to make sure you guys do not miss a thing. Otherwise guys, let's just get right into it. And real quickly here to mention some products that are perfect for sourcing on Alibaba before we get into uh, my seven strategies and get into my screen here, is that simple products are perfect for Alibaba, especially for people who don't have you know, experience working with manufacturers. So products that, uh, that don't have any electronic components to it, don't have any anything that's gonna go in your face or in your body, uh, things that aren't complicated and, and complex. Uh, simple products like, uh, think of, you know, floor mats, uh, desks, um, you know, maybe simple electronics such as lights. There's obviously endless types of products, but just know that it's harder to get more complex products in China, not saying they don't know how to make them, it's more of that the communication is is a lot harder, so it's it's hard to communicate what you need exactly and what your expectations are for those products. That's pretty much it. So the simpler the product, the easier it is to get on Alibaba. Obviously, the more complex, it gets a little harder. You just get to work on your communication uh, with that supplier, or you know turn to a U.S. supplier or someone who you know speaks English or your language uh, that you can better explain what you're looking for. All right, guys. So to get into the good stuff, the the meaty stuff here. Uh, what you've been probably waiting for. Uh, so the first you know, tip, first strategy uh, we're gonna talk about uh, relates to communication. So communication is key when working with manufacturers, right? You wanna make sure that they know exactly what you're looking for, what you want, what your expectations are, uh, especially if you're trying to customize your product a great deal. So the best thing you could do at first, uh, of course, is open up a line of communication, a direct line of communication with the manufacturer themselves. So if we're in Alibaba here, just using this uh, as an example, if I hit you know coffee frother right here, I'm looking for you know just the coffee frother uh, to manufacture, you know, put in my store or sell online. Uh, we can see we have a factory right here, and we'll have hundreds and hundreds, 827 to be specific, uh, types of suppliers uh, for this product. First thing we're gonna do is contact supplier. Okay. Uh, I'll talk about you know what to look for when it comes to suppliers on here and tell you how to do that at the end of this video. Uh, but right now, I'm just, I wanna talk about these strategies first, uh, these ones you need to know before moving forward. So the first thing you wanna do to open up this line of communication is hit contact supplier here. Okay, so what happens is you're just reaching out. So you'll make an Alibaba account. Obviously, you'll put your business or your name there. And then you can reach out uh, and tell them a little bit about yourself, what you're looking for in a product, and they'll respond back on Alibaba's messaging system, okay? So what the strategy is here and the tip that's very, very important is that, you know, they work in different time zones. Like it's gonna be very hard, you know, especially messaging or even email, it's gonna be really hard to get like fast communication, uh, quickly vet these people, tell them what you want uh, very quickly. So after you get them on Alibaba's messaging system, the best thing you wanna do is either move them to Skype or WeChat, okay? So a lot of them use WeChat uh, in China. Obviously, it's a Chinese company. Uh, Skype is what I personally use. And no, don't, don't worry. Uh, I'm not video chatting them. I'm, I'm a very introverted person. Uh, these videos are hard enough to do uh, alone. So I'm not, uh, you know, FaceTiming these people, uh, you know, and putting myself out there. We're just using Skype instant messenger so we can talk quickly back and forth, send pictures, uh, talk about what we want, uh, get to know them a little bit, which is important. I'll go deeper on that as well. Uh, but this is super important because if you go through email or, or Alibaba's messaging system to get like five or 10 pieces of information, it could take all week. And when you have an instant messenger connected with them, this can happen in the span of 30 minutes. So this is gonna decrease the time it takes for you uh, to get the answers you're looking for and obviously communicate what you want to 
the manufacturer. On top of that, you're probably asking me, Cameron, so what should I even say to him? Like, how do I start the conversation? What's the best way to do that? The best way to do that is to send them an RFQ. So what an RFQ is, is a request for quotation. All this is is a fancy way of saying a letter to ask the pricing and to see if we can work together. Uh, to you know, not complicate this too much, I, I do have an example uh, right here that I've made out uh, that I give to you know my students and uh, that I use myself. Uh, and I have this built out in a guide already and you can copy and paste this and insert your details. Uh, I'll show you how to get this uh, at the end of the video, that way you're all uh, caught up in everything and then you know where to get this as well. So this will make you seem more professional. Uh, it'll help you ask more important questions at first, that way you can quickly vet these people uh, and you know we'll attract a little bit more attention instead of you getting lost in the, the woodwork of all their messages they're probably getting from other people in your position. Moving on to strategy number two. So always, always make sure to reach out to multiple factories with the product you're looking for, okay? So make sure you always have backups, you're always vetting multiple, multiple suppliers. This will, you know, first of all, help you, you know, rid out any scammers potentially if this is all new to you and kind of talk to manufacturers and hopefully get one that, you know, is trustable, that, that you can work with, uh, that has, you know, the best experience working with your type of seller or, or the type of client you are. With that, having multiple suppliers is always a good rule of thumb uh, to make sure that you don't, you know, hedge all your bet on one manufacturer, what if you know one can't get the project done in time uh, for your second or third order? At least you'll have a backup to make sure that you know you can always reach out to someone else uh, to get your project done and get those products to you. So to show you how to do this on Alibaba to make sure you're you know saving yourself time uh, and getting the most efficiency out of this website is to use something called favorites. So when you pick your manufacturers, the ones you like, uh, that thing that could do very, very well, again, all these details here help you determine that, which I'll show you another video at the end of this uh, that will take you through all that if you wanna go deeper into this subject. But what we're doing here is we're gonna go over to favorites, right? So once we picked it, we're gonna hit favorites right here. Uh, we're gonna go down, hit this one in favorites right here uh, and go down and, and do this for, you know, all the manufacturers like. I actually go pretty hard on this. <laughs> I usually reach out to 10 to 15 different manufacturers at least. If there's like 20 qualified ones, I'm gonna reach out to 20. I'm gonna vet all of them to make sure I'm finding the best possible manufacturer for myself. Uh, so we keep going down here, hitting favorites. Uh, again, hit as many as you want or you feel comfortable with. And then with these, instead of just messaging them one by one, we can go up to favorites right here, uh, view all items. So in here, we can see all the suppliers we favorited. I'm gonna hit right here to check all. Now we're gonna hit contact supplier. So instead of doing it one by one, I can reach out after I put this little code in here. Now I can paste my RFQ right here and to reach out to multiple manufacturers all at once to make sure that you know I'm making sure I'm getting a response from at least a few, have you know a couple backup options, have some options to choose from to make sure that I'm getting the best quality and the best price possible. Strategy and tip number three, guys, is to make sure you're building relationships with your manufacturers, okay? So, so hang with me here for a second, I'll explain what I mean. First, I just wanna say, this is the most important if you're working with Chinese manufacturers. If you're working with manufacturers here in the USA, Europe, Canada, I'm not sure about, but I know in the USA it's all about numbers, it's all about money, it's all about time. Let's say the fewest words possible to get the best results and, and move on so we can just you know keep the assembly line turning. In China, if you're working with Chinese manufacturers, it's not all about money to them. It's not all about you know just moving quickly and, and just you know being cold and, and getting things pushed out as fast as possible. They care about relationships there. They care about you know building something uh, mutual back and forth, a friendship or whatever you want to call it. So I think this is one of the most underrated things you can do with your manufacturer because you know I was guilty of this at first. You know when I was reaching out to manufacturers three four years ago when I started this process. I was cold, I was just like back and forth, like give me the results I want, give it to me now, don't waste my time. But over the years I realized that the, the best manufacturers I've worked with, uh, the best pricing I've gotten, the best quality I've had, I've built the best relationships with that company. So when you build a relationship with that company, they're willing to work with you, they're willing to give you, you know, a price cut here, they're willing to put you at the front of the line to make sure that your order is getting done quickly. They're willing to go into the shop to make sure that your labels are done if you have concerns about it, or to make sure that your product's up to quality for anything that you've been struggling with uh, with the customer when it comes to the product. All these things are very important when it comes to the relationship. And I'll give you a little example here of, of what a relationship might look like. So one of my best manufacturers, one of my best 
you know, products as well. It just kind of goes hand in hand. This was a company and a sales rep uh, in China and we chat all the time on WeChat. So that's how we got started. Uh, she didn't have Skype, so we did WeChat. And at first I'm sure I was cold and just straight to the point, but over time we started talking about like where each other lived, uh, what we did for fun, what our hobbies were, I talked about our families, uh, and eventually get to the point where she, the sales rep for that manufacturer, I would send me photos of her daily commute. She said she'd ride this train for uh, about 45 minutes to get to work, uh, what it looked like. She'd take a walk in the park, show me photos of that, uh, which was super cool. I, I loved that. I also sent her photos back of, of what our area looked like. Uh, I was living in Denver at the time, so I showed her pictures of some hikes, uh, some mountains, things like that. She loved it. And needless to say, when I had a problem with my product, she went to bat for me to help fix that issue. And that's one of the highest quality products I have with the best pricing, the best margins. It's one of the better products that I've ever had on this journey of selling products online and on Amazon. So just a quick story there, guys, to show you what relationships really mean when working with uh, manufacturers. At first, obviously, it's not as important. Uh, you you got to make sure that they have the, the right specs, the right numbers before moving on. But when you start working with these people, be cautious of being cold. Be cautious of not building a relationship with them. Be nice, be friendly, be patient. Trust me, the rewards will pay off later. A little pro tip is they love uh, when you send, you know, gifts at the holidays, right? It doesn't have to be anything like hundreds of dollars, but just small gifts or maybe an e-gift, uh, you know, through WeChat or something like that, or at least just, you know, say happy birthday if you figured it out. I uh, wish them a happy Chinese New Year. That stuff goes a long way uh, when it comes to building relationships with manufacturers. Moving on to strategy and tip number four, guys. So always, always, always get your samples from your manufacturers, okay? Don't skimp out on this. Always get and have samples delivered to you before making your final purchase or your final decision with that manufacturer. This is huge to make sure that you actually feel this product in your hand before making the final decision, just from the fact of, you know, there's times where I thought the manufacturer was the best, then they sent me the, the product and it just, I felt it and it was just like, this is low quality, this is crap. Uh, I'm not gonna sell this to uh, my customers. And you get this, so like when you get samples, it's, it's kind of like that final decision mark to picking your manufacturer. So what I do is I pick my favorite two to three manufacturers uh, and I have them deliver me samples before I make my final decision on who to pick. And I can hear it now. I can just hear it right now. Cameron, they're just, why are they so dang expensive? Samples are just so pricey. Trust me, they're worth it when you're making huge orders uh, and you're trying to get high quality. Uh, there's no room on today's market for poor quality products. And so it's worth the cost. Uh, and to give you an idea, if you don't know what it would cost for samples, it's about $50 to $200 per sample. So yes, it is pricey. What you're paying there is International Express shipping for those samples. Uh, so you can see right here in my screen, uh, DHL is the best to get your samples delivered. Uh, you don't have to make an account, just ask your manufacturer to use their account. They get better discounts anyways because they, they push high volume. If you make an account on DHL, you're, you're gonna start at like the, the most expensive tier because you don't have any volume moving through and shipping, so your prices are gonna be a lot higher. Uh, so use your uh, supplier's DHL express shipping. Uh, if you have ideas, if they have different packaging, if they have uh, multiple options for products, or if you wanna make sure that it's branded and customized perfectly, uh, to your specifications uh, that you explain when you, you know we're talking to them in Skype and instant messenger, WeChat, whatever it may be, you're gonna ask for that sample fully done, right? Fully done, that way it can get sent to you. You see the final product, especially if there's a lot of customizations for it. Um, you know, in, in a case where, you know, say it was just a cup and it had a logo on it and they had a sample of another cup with someone else's logo on it, I might just get that for time's sake because if they can get that logo on there, it looks good, then they can obviously put my logo on there. But if there's huge custom changes to those products, you're going to wanna get that fully done and sent to you. Yes, it's gonna be longer, yes, it's gonna be more expensive, but if you have big orders coming in, this is definitely worth the cost there. On to strategy and tip number five, guys. So let's talk about negotiation. So negotiating is, is a huge part of working with Chinese manufacturers. The price you see on Alibaba isn't the real price, so I'll show you what I mean here. So if I go to, you know, we're on suppliers right here, so that's what I did when I first searched coffee frother, is I went to suppliers right here. If we click products, we'll be able to see uh, some of their vague pricing for these products. So we see $1.99 to $2.19 here for 50 pieces, uh, $14.20 to $39 for two pieces, uh, $10.50 to $12 here, $9.50 to $12.24, 
uh, 20 per carton here. So we see prices on here that are actually pretty high. Like, what's the deal with this? The deal is that these aren't the true prices. And even the prices they give you on the quotation, the RFQ that we talked about, aren't necessarily the final prices. You have room to negotiate here. Do understand that you have to be very respectful of this. You have to be very careful uh, to, to not burn the relationship over trying to get an extra penny of this. Also know that if you're ordering a very, very small quantity, you have no leverage at all to, to get the price you want. But if you're ordering like 500 to 1,000 or maybe you're working your way up there, just know that you can negotiate the price. The best way to do this, uh, of course, always respectfully, relationship is more important than this final price. If the price works for you and you, you're making a good margin on it, don't don't push that envelope right away. Wait till later. Wait till you order more to really get that huge price cut. But what I do to negotiate and make sure I set myself up to not overpay is in the RFQ, you'll see this too when you grab your copy, is that I'll ask for prices uh, for unit quantities of 500, 1,000, and, and maybe even 10,000. What that means is that they'll give me the price for 500 units, 1,000 units, and then 10,000. So I'll see their price structuring. And with that price structuring, uh, I'll be able to see like, okay, where, like how big are the price cuts? Where do they have wiggle room? Things like that. So that's, that's one thing I do there. The next thing I do uh, is you're doing it naturally if you follow my steps is that you're talking to multiple manufacturers and getting quotes from multiple manufacturers. So if you like factory A, but factory B has a cheaper price, but it's kind of close, how factory A, like, hey, I got factory B on the line over here. Their quote was about 10 cents cheaper a unit. Is there any way you can work with me in the middle? I'd love to work with you. Instead, I think you have higher quality. I think we already have a better relationship uh, just by chatting with you. I'd love to make this partnership work. Again, don't ask for 50% off. Don't don't push this thing. Just, just know you have wiggle room and know that the final prices aren't really the final prices, uh, especially if you're buying in large quantities. So I hope that one helps. I hope that puts it in perspective that the final price isn't really the final price. And if you see a high price on Alibaba, don't fear. Keep pushing forward. Uh, there's always ways to uh, find the product you need for the margin you need. Next guys, strategy and tip number six, probably the maybe one of the most important parts here. Definitely crucial uh, for you guys to listen up here though. So I'm gonna tell you the strategy behind how to make your purchase on Alibaba with your new manufacturer to protect yourself uh, to the best of your ability. So first of all, most terms when talking to you know, Alibaba and Chinese manufacturer are 30, 70 terms. So what this means is uh, for you to place your order uh, and for them to start manufacturing, you need to put 30% down of the total order bill right there, right then. And after they produce your goods, they're gonna want 70% uh, after that before they ship the product to you. I know this is, there's some wiggle room there. That could be 50-50, right? 50% to get the order started, 50% to get the order uh, delivered to you. Uh, but 3070 is what I usually work off of uh, to get that going. So how you pay guys. So we have actually multiple options to pay. So their number one suggestion is probably always gonna be a wire transfer. So you know, bank to bank, uh, pay $45, get an instant wire uh, to that. But that's the most risky one, especially if you've never worked with a manufacturer before. So a second option that's a little less risky than that is Alibaba trade insurance, okay? So you can make your order through Alibaba, which we can see uh, up here in orders right here. Uh, and with this, uh, we can have Alibaba uh, with their assurance plan, uh, essentially just guarantee the sale to make sure that if anything goes wrong, you can file uh, a claim with Alibaba to try to get your money back. Uh, in there, you have the ability to you know, pay with e-check, uh, credit card, uh, and by wire transfer as well through Alibaba. Now, this isn't my favorite way, but this is a good option uh, versus wire transfer at first. My favorite way is to use PayPal. Now they, they don't like this the most usually just because of fees, but I just willingly say, I'll pay the fees through PayPal uh, to make sure that you know our first order goes smooth, then we'll work off of PayPal. Uh, PayPal does have the highest fees when it comes to this, uh, but it's definitely worth it because they have the best protection for you. So if you make the purchase through PayPal, and then on top of that, in your PayPal account, you use a credit card, you'll have now two layers of protection. So PayPal, you can file a claim, which they're very customer friendly, uh, versus Alibaba, which I feel, I could be wrong on this, don't quote me, uh, you know, Alibaba don't hate me for saying this either, but I feel like they're more manufacturer oriented. They'll side more with the manufacturer 
Uh, plus, they're a Chinese-based company, so it's a lot harder to communicate with them. On PayPal, it's an American company. It's easier uh, to talk to them. It's easier to file a claim. Uh, and obviously, the credit card just acts as another backup uh, to put you know, fraud protection on that and, and file a claim through them. Uh, so PayPal, uh, I like it. I tell them, you know, maybe they'll split the fees with you, but I tell them straight up that I'll pay for the fees just to make sure that first transaction goes smooth. I have my protection. I'm not out thousands of dollars if something goes wrong. And then we can move to wire transfer as we things progress and as we keep ordering. One last final point for that, guys, is always make sure that you have a contract with the manufacturer before you place the order, okay? So this contract will have your information, will have the details of what you're ordering, how much you're ordering, what's the, you know, what logo's going on it, what label's going on it, what are the specs of the packaging, what are the custom parts of this product that are different than, than standard, uh, laid out in plain terms in a contract, have them read over it, have them sign it as well as backup. Now this isn't, you know, foolproof, right? You know, contracts to Chinese, to, to America, just the law there is, is it's kind of iffy, uh, but this definitely gives you a layer of protection. If they're a decent manufacturer, which hopefully you're picking one, uh, and you come back and say, hey, you didn't hit this point right here and you signed this. They're gonna do their best uh, to help, you know, save that relationship and, and protect their word. So getting a contract is definitely something you're gonna wanna do. Uh, you can get templates online. Uh, I have one built out for my students. Uh, but otherwise, guys, make sure you get one. Uh, you know, no need to go pay a lawyer thousands of dollars for this. Uh, you can definitely find templates or someone cheap, uh, you know, maybe around. Next, guys, tip and strategy number seven, how to avoid scams, okay? So how to protect yourself the best. We just talked about one way, uh, which is getting a contract, paying the right way. But how do we know that these manufacturers are good to go, that they're, they're right for us, uh, that they're not scam artists? Well, the best thing you could do is do deep research on each manufacturer before moving forward with them, okay? So if we go here, uh, we hit suppliers, hit search for coffee frother. Uh, we can see the name of the company right here. We can click into it. They have a website. We can see if they're real. We can watch the videos of them. Uh, we could talk to them. Uh, we can figure out, you know, see if they're legit, they're real. They have phone numbers as well we can call. Uh, so you wanna make sure that you're properly vetting these people, making sure they're real, right? If they give you an address, go check it out on Google Maps uh, or Google Satellite, whatever it's called, uh, Google Earth, got it. Uh, and then go check it out uh, to see if it's a real building, uh, everything like that. Call them, see if they are, you know, if they're working with the same manufacturer or know the person you've been communicating with on WeChat or Skype or Alibaba, wherever it might be. So you might be saying like, this sounds confusing. I don't know what to look for when it comes to here. Uh, I'm gonna show you a video that goes deep, deep into this spine specifics. The only reason we're not getting to that is this will be like a three hour video if I did that. I just wanna give you the basics, the really need to know strategies, and then I'll give you everything else uh, at the end of this video so you can keep learning about this. Another thing to watch out is too, if their price is like one fifth of the other competitors cost, it's probably too good to be true, right? It's, it's probably a scam, it's probably fake, it's, it's probably, or, or maybe they're skimping on materials that's maybe lead paint or something like that. You don't want anything to do with that. You wanna make sure that it seems right. You know, if it seems fishy, it probably is fishy. But that's why, you know, talking to so many manufacturers, it gives you kind of, uh, it gives you a set, you know, if 90% are talking like this and then that 10% are saying this, or giving you these prices, that's probably in the wrong, right? So you push them away. Also, I talk to the manufacturers for long periods of time. So on Skype, Instant Messenger, on WeChat, I probably talk to them for a week or two weeks before ordering samples and kind of feeling them out, you know, to make sure they're real, right? Scam artists aren't gonna sit on the line for you for two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. They're gonna go get the easy fish down the road uh, that's gonna buy that night. So if you keep talking to them, building that relationship, uh, that kind of tells you more and more. Uh, the person that's scamming you isn't gonna work to build that relationship. So if you guys wanna get further into that, I know I sound like a broken record, but watch that video. We'll pop it on the screen here at the end. I'll also link it down in the description. This goes through how to look for suppliers in Alibaba, like details, like I'm doing it myself, all the way to like how to get it shipped to you, like shipped overseas without avoiding costly custom hangups and everything like that. So check that out. Uh, it's gonna be in the uh, link down below as well. On top of that, guys, if you like this video, if this was helpful to you, hit that like button, maybe share it to someone else going through this as well. Uh, you know, comment down below. If you get any questions, I, I'm an open book. I, I know these videos aren't always perfect. I can't get to everything. Uh, it's just too hard. Uh, these videos are kind of harder for me too, just because I'm more of an introvert. So make sure you comment down below. I try to get back uh, to you guys and, and help you out there uh, with any questions you may have. Of course, subscribe if you want to get more deeper into sourcing, 
uh, Amazon FBA, e-commerce, online selling, things like that. Then real quick before we go, guys, uh, I knew I was gonna tell you how to get that RFQ guide. So that is in my field manual. I have a full field manual that explains, you know, how to source from China, how to pick a winning product, on how to sell this on Amazon. Obviously, if you're not interested on Amazon, it's not gonna be fully relatable to you, but you see here, step number two is find a top line supplier, limit all risks. So I have a whole section built out uh, just about finding a good supplier. Uh, it's very in depth here uh, as well. Then I have the example RFQ that you can literally copy and paste. There'll be a link for that down below for you guys to go grab that. There'll be an instant download. And then I do ask for your email address so I can send it to you guys there. Uh, if I seem to bug you too much, just unsubscribe. I get it. Uh, I don't like tons of emails either. But that is it, guys. I, I hope that was helpful. I hope that shared some uh, some light on, on the subject for you guys. Uh, and of course, uh, watch that video going deeper on the subject. All right, guys, that's it. We'll see you on the next one.